Ready to start recording on the computer. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. This is 103.9 Wozo Radio FM all day, all long. And today we are here with uh, a cadre of companions, you know, my uh, a gaggle of good fellows, my bunch of bros, friends <laughs> here to friends. discuss all that is great in the world of science supposition and superstition if you want to talk about some cool stuff you came to the right place and we're going to be talking about cool stuff all day today particularly our topic today faith in film and what kind of you know bad things might happen as a result of how faith is depicted in films that are you know pretty popular today or media in general but that in my head is the main course i really do want to dive into some noodly appetizers so how about we start with a quick little invocation by our own dread pirate for absolutely hail marinara full of spice the flying spaghetti monster is filled with thee tasty art thou to among sauces and blessed is the fruit of thy jar tomatoes mm. although fools believe them as vegetables holy marinara chief among toppings save a plate for us now and at about six o'clock when dinner is served if you would be so kind Wrong. Wrong. Guys, I'd be remiss if I didn't do proper introductions of everyone who was on today's show. John Richards, it's good to see you. How you been, my friend? Hello. Hi. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dread Pirate Higgs, how you been? It's good to see you too. It's uh it's it's been an interesting interesting couple of weeks. I was working down on the coast, uh, so I wasn't able to attend last week's show. You're actually working. You're doing some marriaging. I've heard. Uh, well, I did the yeah, I did the marriage there on uh, September nineteenth. That went very well, and of course, nice. I posted the full video of the ceremony on my YouTube channel, uh, which I'll plug a little later in the show. Nice. Um, but I, um, I, uh, I've been in contact with someone who's uh, sympathetic to the plight of pastafarians. Uh, particularly the ones in BC, and of course is now looking to include a, a larger story um, of Pastafarian efforts around the world. So I've been working with him rather closely, and uh, of course my ongoing battle with the Insurance Corporation of BC, which is the uh, agency Ooh. responsible for government-issued licensing mm. uh, or identification, I should say, is uh stepping up a notch and um looking forward to some uh interesting outcomes from that not bad dread yeah. you'd be particularly proud of me because i actually wear your or i wear a flying spaghetti monster hat typically Sweet. when i'm like out and about oot in a boot and playing disc golf and with friends when i was over with Boudreaux, we do a, a thing called a summit where all of his neighbors come to his backyard we sit around a fireplace and we talk into the evening into the midnight free discussion minimal judgment but we were allowed to say what's on our mind in a in a conducive atmosphere that's fairly supportive nice. about a number or myriad of what would normally be considered controversial topics. Cool. And we do have Christians and atheists and everything in between there. We had a Christian who was looking at the hat that I was wearing, and he's like, I would like to talk about flying spaghetti monsters. Because mm -hmm. don't you think that the those adherents feel like they're just doing it to spite Christianity and they don't actually believe in a God? And I actually watched some of your shows, and I know this dread character that you're talking about. And I don't even think he genuinely believes in the God. What do you think about that? In my opinion to that, or my immediate response was, it doesn't matter what he thinks. What he's what the message is is that there is a clear bias of power that's given to very particular, you know, uh, worldview, which is the Christian right. worldview, by governments, by institutions that's supposed to be unbiased in that nature. And what what we're seeing is when Dredd comes and tries to wear his religious garb, the government's saying you're not a real religion. But when it's someone wears a Christian cross, it's like you're a real religion. We'll let you go through. If you wear a, a, a turban, we'll let that through. But not if you wear this. And that's not the government's precision. Right. And so if your reaction to when you see that is, well, maybe the people with the condor on their heads aren't genuinely believing in their God. You've missed the point. The point is yeah, the government shouldn't be the one deciding who's the real one and who's the real, who isn't the real perfect, one. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I I, I, I absolutely. I, thank you for being in our camp. No thank sweat. You. No sweat. No sweat. I regularly pray before I go to what? How about that? I'll do a, 
right I'll, do a little noodle, I'll do a little noodle. I'll do a little noodle, another noodle. And then I put, and it goes in almost every single time. Can't, Perfect. can't be any happier. Hey, what's up, John? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know, freedom of information. We all, in various countries now, we all have freedom of information, don't we? We can, hmm. we can request from the authorities, whatever they, whoever they are, how they do things and, you know, why they think this is true and this, that, and the other. So why don't we ask the authorities how they determine what is and what isn't a legitimate religion? Right. Right, right, right. Wow, man. And I know this can almost be a topic for its own show, but I did want to actually, John Richards, your, your crusade for atheism, who, who have you shook hands with? What's your, what's your presidential exploits, king of atheism in, in UK? What, how's it going on there? <laughs> well, I, I, unfortunately, I, I don't carry as much weight as the king, so I don't get invited to as many places as he does. <laughs> oh, there's a new king in town. That's right. My bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is raise the profile. I'm, I'm trying to make more people aware that we have an, an organization and uh, I'm the leader of it mm. and that I'm available. You know, I've, I've been invited to make some speeches at various places and up and down the country. And recently I went to an, an event organized by the National Secular Society where I was in the audience, but I still put up my hand and I got to be the first person to speak after the platform. Nice. So uh, and that, that was videoed. So it's, it's out there. You can watch that. And so I'm doing my best to get shaking the hands of the right people. Not nice. bad, not bad. Listen, you have that film coming out. Dread, you got your marriage film coming out. I want to talk about a film that's still sticking with me. I saw this on YouTube. And let me tell you something. <laughs> it, as an way. atheist, it just bothers me because this is a this is a student film made by a very genuine person. Like I don't have any, I'm, I'm not gonna plug him. I won't, I, I will, I will refrain from, you know, throwing any like bad eyes towards this video, but very genuinely made student film about a landlord who's an alcoholic, who's kicking out people out of his apartment complex in winter time. And the families that get kicked out or left on the streets, they die because, due to exposure. We're talking about children's wives because they couldn't give the landlord enough money or they were in debt. And the guy didn't care because he's just deep in his alcohol, alcoholism. He's a complete nihilist. He doesn't see any good in virtue of people. And he just wants his money and what's his due. Turns out that continues until he's on his deathbed. And he's about to die until he's visited by a very handsome uh, tuxedo wearing or suit wearing angel with a, a British accent. Probably a fake one. It was, pretty, it, was, it was a bit of a lilt to it. But anyway, the, the, the person is not the god of death which the man originally thought, but is actually the angel Gabriel or something like that. And he's setting him up with a proposition of saying, listen, if you just ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you and you don't have to worry about it. You can go to heaven. And the guy's like, no, I don't deserve to go to heaven because I let families die on the streets. I, you know, uh, was inconsiderate. I was rude to people and I let people die. Like I was a terrible person. And the Gabriel said, actually, none of that matters because God can forgive you. So all you have to do is ask for forgiveness and you'll be fine. He's like, well, what about all the dead families I killed on the street? And he said, why do you think I'm here? They asked me to come to you for salvation. That's how much. <laughs> That's why I'm here to invite you to heaven. And he's like, oh, OK, then I I'm sorry. And the, and the angel's like, you are forgiven. And they go to heaven together, end of the movie. And in my head, I'm just like, whoa, how do you do this in film? What's the message being sent? Like, what is going on here? And so, you know, this isn't the first time I've seen something like this. There was an entire show called Touched by an Angel. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. Maybe Canada? Yeah, TV show? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That is the setup for almost every Touched by an Angel episode. It's right. a terrible person. At the last second, they're about to die. They get, they say, "Hey, you want to just say sorry?" It's like, sure, and they go. And the person who they, you know, screwed over is still in a bad state, but no, they're happy to go and they're free. It's a bad message, and I and I also find that this was like a in, indirect cure for alcoholism too, because he's just like in the process of doing the movies, like I don't need to drink this. This tastes terrible. I'm just going to drink water from now on. And in Touched by an Angel, there's a bunch of uh, there's a myriad of like 
sure. very terrible things just walked around. I want to talk about faith in film and why that might have a really bad impact on things. Dred, do you have thoughts on this and do you have any other examples? Well, sure. I mean, uh, not necessarily examples because they're all over the place. I mean, mm. way uh, religious sp like stories are portrayed, you know, the best story or the greatest story ever told or Ben-Hur or, um, you know, anything with uh, Charlton Heston in it uh, is always, you know, um, address the stories in a, in a absolutely most favorable way to mm. the group that is depicting of course <clears throat> and um but uh you know just on that uh you know thing about uh you know children being left out in the street to die and then them exactly. asking them asking god or jesus to uh forgive the, forgive the guy you know people don't think about the other way and that is what happens to people who are not religious who die Mm -hmm. uh, at the hands of a person uh, who then later seeks, uh, uh, you know, forgiveness from from God. The the dead ones don't go, and he does. And it seems like uh, a very cruel and unjust uh, worldview. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. John, you're taking notes almost looks like. what What's, what's <laughs> on your mind, my friend? Yeah, I am. I'm writing down thoughts so that I don't forget to bring them to the to the table. Please. So, what we're talking about here is dispensing a message, up. right? Propaganda. And, yeah, exactly. And originally, before we had this technology, originally it was just some guy in the street talking and giving a story, and people watching and and getting involved in relating to the story, like you've just been doing here time and and then things moved on a bit writing was invented so you could take a copy of this home and read it for yourself and more recently there was um artwork so you could get a painting that represented aspects of the story we're improving with as technology is developing and then of course um you you could get uh, a, a um, photograph that showed you where the story was depicted and so on right and right we're getting closer fine. exactly we're getting we're getting so a picture is worth a thousand words but a movie mm. must be worth I don't know, ten thousand so what we're talking about here is the development of technology we've now come to the greatest medium film or you know video is the, is the best way of getting your message across. Mm. But it's still, it's still your propaganda. It's right. still your opportunity to push something into somebody else's head. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, ahead, yeah, I was gonna say, it, it's almost like uh, the Tim Robbins phenomena, right? Where, or, or when you go to church even, it's, it's like a, a pep rally, right. you know, a pep talk. And film yeah. acts in that very same way. It's just giving people this false sense of uh, uh, power, power, a false sense of power over themselves, over their, right. over their world, over their life. Um, but it's illusory, right? Right. Yeah. Mm. I, I also feel like there's a, in my head, the worst thing that a God can allow is needless harm. Right. And mm, yeah. it seems like the model of, most of these films is I allow this harm to happen as an all-powerful being. I let it happen and I let it continue to happen. And then yeah. after it happens, I then forgive it, even though I could have yeah. stopped it or yeah. caused something else to avoid it and still gave the same message of being like, hey, listen, this landlord's about to kick you out. In fact, he did kick you out, but believe it or not, I have like this whole extra home that you could live in and I'll just talk to this landlord and let him know what he did and that was bad. And in the meanwhile, you have a roof over your heads and your family won't have to starve on the streets. Great, everybody happy? Fantastic. No, God waits until the all the harm that he could have stopped has occurred and then afterwards forgives everybody because the war that he gives them is so much more meaningful than the lives and the suffering that they went through. But in my head, that's still, you know, you could have still given them the ward. You still could have given them the carrot yeah. without the stick, you know? Why do we have to allow this needless harm to happen? And what sort of virtue is there in allowing it to happen as a learning lesson by what is proposedly a benevolent God? I just find it to be, by definition, needless when you do this kind of harm 
to like people and then to spread that as a message just sort of makes people indoctrinate themselves that the suffering they're going through has meaning and i feel like you could be in a situation where you could get help but you've already reached a conclusion where this test this the suffering that i'm going through this this alcoholism this attraction that i have for children or this abuse that i've rendered on on innocent women is is to get me towards some sort of character development in my own narrative and that's such a dangerous position to put in because you only put yourself in position to cause more needless harm when there yeah. are better avenues for people to get that kind of support or therapy through more you know i in my opinion secular means secular fashions Dre, yeah. what do you think is that for you? well i was i was going to say that uh, you know just following along that line mm. is the idea that it gives people a false sense of universal justice yes these yeah. films tv series uh actually you know because you know i work in the film industry for security for movies and, and tv mm-hmm. um and there's a there's a, a series coming out called the scriptures and of course this is all it's going to be episodic right um where these little uh you know stories are going to be told where at the end of the day you know everyone's forgiven uh, and justice in the universe is delivered um, by that all-powerful God. So, mm. um, yeah, it's um, it's and you know, I I I wonder to what extent um, people feel like the producers and whatnot uh, understand what they're doing. Mm. You know, if if they actually believe in what they are doing. Or if they're recognizing that uh, these things make a lot of money, yes, uh, yes, garner a, a large following, uh, regardless of their personal uh, views on religion. You know, maybe you know who, who knows. Maybe it's a bunch of uh, Buddhists sitting around there going, "Hey, we can make a lot of money off these Christians." <laughs> yeah, a bunch of Wiccans, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> right. I, exactly. I have this. I think you hit a really important important point because there's that universal sense of justice that is instilled by movies like this, which can cause someone who would, for example, not even related to themselves, if they saw, for example, a hurricane going through a uh, 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 impoverished town, they mm. can say in their head, "Well, God has a plan for that," because in my head, my God would never just let something like that happen. Like, I'm sure like when those people die or if the destruction happens, he's going to find a way to make it all right. And I don't have to do anything in the sense of, you know, donations or spreading awareness or anything like that. That's their problem. And God's got it taken care of. And then on the flip side, the idea of like, how can you keep spreading a message like that? Well, if you believe in that universal sense of justice, you're not doing anything wrong. If by virtue of the fact that you can do it, makes it morally right or else your god right. would have found some way to stop you and yeah, what yeah. a scary kind of mindset that is right absolutely absolutely yeah and uh yeah it's uh it is it's a very scary situation mm-hmm. um and you know i yeah I, I don't know what more to say about it but uh I, I got some because we have a bunch of comments from reddit and i want to go oh, okay a couple yeah. of them. but lorena bobbitt said um so on the on the prompt of hey you know I just saw a movie that cured alcoholism and forgave a evil landlord who killed his tenants by being offered a Bible <laughs> right. by an angel, and uh, Lorena said that's basically alcohol anonymous or alcoholics anonymous in few yes. words, right. and it's a very interesting point because I don't think alcoholics anonymous. Now I'm going to say this uh, tentatively. I don't think they genuinely are trying to trick people. I think in their head, they say, hey, you know, 30% of the people who go through our program don't become alcoholics anymore. That's better than nothing. And, you know, they're that desperate. It's a system that works for a certain group of people. And we've done a lot of work in that aspect. Mm-hmm. In my head, it's like only 30%. What, what about like all the people that fail? It's like, we don't talk about that and we don't report that. So you don't have to worry about right. it. It's like, well, there's a problem there. This isn't necessarily- Exactly. If, if, you're not, if you're not investigating your own methodology- to determine what is not working and then right. find a way to improve it. Yeah, you're just you're you're uh, you know, you're gliding on thin ice really. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it's yeah. And in my head it it's the sort of thing where when you're in Alcoholics Anonymous and you are a Christian, 
you can become even more frustrated with yourself or dig yourself into an even deeper pit when you find that the program isn't successful for you because you're like, this is, the, I'm, a, a, I'm a Christian. You're telling me Christian propaganda, but yet I'm right. still addicted to the alcohol. Like this is a program that should have worked for me. Like, right. why am I one of the people that it's not? Am I exactly. probably, now I got to drink more alcohol to like figure that out. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I'm incurable. I can't, I can't right. be helped. Not, I can't be helped by even the most powerful being in the universe. Exactly. Yeah. For the 30% that gets through the program, and I'm just pulling that out. It's probably, I don't know. They don't report the numbers decidedly. So you'd think they'd want to. But if it was only 30% and they're making even more percentages, even worse case, or even if it was just 50 50, you know, even if it was like a 90% success rate and they just don't want to report that, mm -hmm. why can't we get some visibility on the people that don't make it through the program and give them an outlet to where that might be a bit more, you know, meaningful as a better methodology for them saying, yes. like, hey, without the religious baggage, you can process this, this, you can get through this, we can work through this too. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, like uh, when you say 30%, you know, I know you're just kind of tossing that out sure. as, a, as an arbitrary figure. But, uh, you know, anyone that was kind of following uh, people after or after they've come into the program for a year, two years, five years, whatever, mm -hmm. um, it's all self-reported. Right. Right. So the, the people would be saying anything with respect to what their habits are after you know because now say they've come into the community and they're starting to gain some respect but secretly right. speaking the mickey and into the locker room or you know into the into the top drawer at the desk at office at the office right. you know right it's all self-reported so it's completely unreliable in any respect how they would report out the numbers on that night owl 79 also concurs he says that i did an anger management course in prison most of it was spouting religious bs and right. I've been told addiction courses were the same. And then Dirk Diggler Kojak also responded, you know, movies like that are enough to make me want to drink really bad. <laughs> and then 11 3 said, you just basically swapped one crutch for another. Yes. And I feel like that's the messaging of the movie. You know, you were talking about how, you know, while we don't know the, the reported numbers because they choose to keep those internal, the value of films is that you get 100% success rate. <laughs> that's right. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. have to worry about anyone falling off the, the wagon because it's just like, no, we made this perfect for you. We even had the angels come in and like take them straight to heaven. You're done for all the credits. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Is is Rotten Tomatoes a you know a fair uh, indicator of, of whether or not it worked or what? Sure. I think that you know, could be something. the Switchblade, Ben-Hur, you know, how they fare on Rotten Tomatoes, you know, okay. which are, tend to be a little more critical. Yeah, you know, I do also want to talk about the merits of why that's just a really, why religious films tend to just rely on some of the worst conventions and writing, story writing in the first Oh, place. absolutely. I mean, you, you think about Jesus as a character in a book. Oh my like, gosh. Wow, absolutely yeah. boring. Yeah, I absolutely. I mean, there's no character <laughs> arc, there's no change in that person. It's good from the beginning, good at the oh, end, I, good listen, all the way I through. Listen, I totally want to delve into this. How about we go into into the second half of the show? We'll sure, come right sure. back in because there are some real there are some real narrative problems we'll delve right into. But oh, yeah. uh, let's give a chance for everybody to come back in. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're going to take a quick break and then come right back after this uh, ad break. Ad break. Hello, welcome back to the show. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, Wozo 103.9 FM, all day, all long. We're here talking with friends about the nature of faith in film. And we left off on a pretty juicy topic. Dread Pirate Higgs, you were talking, you're about to do a whole break into the whole aspect of Jesus. I have a tirade pre prepared. <laughs> He's got a tirade. We're gonna do some <laughs> quick listener comments, just throwing some out here just for, for uh, appreciation's sake. Of thank you guys so much for leaving us uh, uh, these great comments. So Thomas, ladder match and by the way i haven't read these out so i'm i see some bad words here please forgive me if i mess up but thomas ladder Matt says uh on the in response to the movie of a guy being handed the bible and being sent to uh heaven yeah trying to get sober at, and and in a way curing his alcoholism in the same process too yeah trying to get sober without jesus in the south is virtually impossible especially if you go to alcoholics anonymous i got very lucky to find a group that doesn't talk about it faith or use the 12 step program, which I'm not telling anyone to use in order to get sober because it's just not for anybody, honestly. 
I don't even have good advice except for being privileged enough to be able to travel around enough and find something interesting or uh, a support group that worked for me in particular. If I was stuck with only the meetings near my house, I would not be sober anymore, or I would not still be sober. Side note, I hadn't been to a church in 15 years until trying Alcoholics Anonymous. The vibes were way more screwed up. You can feel the Christian nationalism bleeding out of the walls. I guess I could chalk it up to the paranoia of detoxing, but I don't think so. I felt very much like a, like we judged each other and all the freaks all and the freaks all go to every meeting in every area so you can never escape the scandal licking. <laughs> a lot of gossiping going on. Thank you for wow. the topic. Thank you for the topic, Thomas. Uh, Dread, we're going to throw this up to you. Thank you guys so much for all the comments. Now, the character of Jesus, the greatest character of all stories ever told. Would, would Are we in agreement, Dread? <laughs> if ever, if ever there was a more shallow character that could have been written, wow, uh, Jesus is it. Um, there is absolutely Wait no... Wait a second, Ebenezer Scrooge? Well, he changes. There's a character arc. He starts, at one, <laughs> he starts in one place and he does a character arc. Yeah. And ends up in a new place. But like, Jesus... oh, the problem's me. I'm going to change. <laughs> That's right. Something yeah. Jesus never did. Okay. Okay. I yeah. see where you're going it's, with it. It makes for very, very poor reading mm -hmm. um, because there's no character, there's no plot development, there's no character development. Uh, the, the character ends as he started, um, you know, pretty much, right? Uh, right. That he's died once. But yeah, of course, he... that, that didn't really impair his abilities or have any effect on his psychology so right oh man pretty shallow you, character john i want to know if this is fair i feel like in <clears> most <throat> superhero stories you have a great villain and a great hero right but the problem yeah. with jesus is that he's his own villain because all he had to do was shut up for just like a couple of for a couple of very specific moments in time and he would have been free to go everything would have been happy like even the roman emperor was like could you just please stop being a jerk and right. like and and just go away for a little bit it's like i will not be stop being a jerk i will continue to bring make fathers fight against their sons and push camels through needles eyes i am the i'm literally god i am god i'm god guys yeah. deal with it and it's just like oh god we're gonna have to kill this guy like there's a whole lineup of you guys saying the exact same thing sorry well you know and even that story you mm -hmm. think that because it was all predetermined there is no I mean, the you know the end before you even start watching the beginning, right? Um, you know, and and that's the the idea of this divine plan, and and it's interesting here because I I read this on a, a meme on uh, Facebook. Uh, did God sacrifice Himself to Himself to save us from Himself right. because of a rule He made Himself? Right. You know, and that's the story in a nutshell, right? Right. You know, it's even worse than that. I'm in a nutshell. He's... He's literally taking his son and nailing him to a, a yeah, pieces of wood. Nailing himself design. to the tree. <laughs> exactly. It's one thing to say it to yourself, but to do that with your own son. Like if God or Jesus calls himself the son of God, it's like, well, then God came up with a plan of like nailing his own son to blocks of wood for, for me. It's like he's well, up there just yeah. hammering him into his own hands, <clears throat> like looking back and it's like, I'm doing this for you. I was like, I didn't ask you to do that. Us. It's like well, reminiscent I, of Abraham with Isaac, right? Yeah, it's it's kind of it's sacrifice, it's blood cult. It's human sacrificing at the worst. John, love to get your feedback on this. What do you think about Jesus as a as a greatest story, greatest character of all time? And don't let think, us persuade you otherwise. I, I think it's pathetic. I mean, if you look, you were you were saying earlier about no character development. Well, mm. We, we don't know what he did for most of his life. He, he popped up in, in, in a manger and then he disappeared. He went AWOL for several, I don't know, two decades, reappeared when he was in his 30s. There's no, he's a two-dimensional creation. There's, there's no relationships going on. He doesn't have a girlfriend. You know, his father and mother have disappeared by then. There's no family. It's so cardboard cardboard exactly yeah, mm. yeah yeah speaking of cardboard listen here's here's my here's my initial complaint about this movie in that he the 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 angel that was originally you know presupposed to be the angel of death handed this landlord a bible but that could have literally been any other kind of piece of paper or any other kind of piece of document or carpet or whatever it could have been the quran 
And he's like, yeah. hey, listen. It could have been Ante- Anton LaVey. Uh, uh, Satanic- Satanism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satanic I God. mean, it could have been literally X-Men issue number 347. <laughs> and he's just like, listen, I'm Galactus. I want to let you know Galactus forgives you. The same script, the same lines, everything after the point. And mm. it would have been more or less the same structure of the movie. The fact that it was a Bible only means that it's like, playing into the already ingrained propaganda that already exists in Western society, where it's like, this is the idealized God. Here's a movie that's placating to that. Just go. There's no other effort put into it past that point. Yeah. yeah. And And it it worries me now because movies have become so realistic. And then the next stage, you know, deep fake when you, you, you can make anyone appear to say anything. Right. That's, what are we going to do then? How are we going to tell fact from fiction? Critical thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, inspiring other people to do it as well. Um, three ham sandwiches from Reddit also concurs and follows up with the comment. Well, they only have the one book. <laughs> and when you only have a hammer, every problem begins to look like a nail, right? Uh, yes, yes, the yes. idea of using the Bible to solve all life's dilemmas, even morally complex problems or like intercommunication issues or interrelated issues with different people. When you only have that one book, it's just like, just give them the book, tell them to read it and they'll become a better person. Mm-hmm. It, and you can walk away and then let, let that happen. I feel like it's nearly irresponsible of a message to start broadcasting. Unless if you already are in that soup sort of, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said soup. I, I didn't mean to offend. Dread Pirate. I meant if you're already in that, that that indoctrination circle basically um it, it, it's, it's an unfortunate thing but yeah you could literally swap out that book for anything which in my head pulls out sort of the narrative problem with the 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 god shows up at the last second or an angel of god shows up at the last second and resolves everyone's problems in fact we already have a term for that it's deus ex machina have you guys heard of that before yes. Ghost in is, the machine. yeah it is well they made stories back in Greece where it's like, oh no, I'm trapped in a pit. I was a terrible person. I shouldn't have been so terrible. Actually, yeah. I'm totally fine. I'm Archimedes or whatever. I'm some I'm some one of the Pantheons of Gons. I'll pull you out of the pit. You're fine. Don't worry about it. That's how movies used to end or how stories used to end for for quite some time. We're seeing the modern day version of that. And we're not pointing it out for the trite in narrative st- structure that it is. And I feel like if we were able to recognize stuff like that and be like, if this was any other God, you wouldn't be happy right now <laughs> as a Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like that's the point that a lot of people are overlooking that if it was the newly Lord who came in and dropped off the, 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 the book, what's the holy book of Pasifarianism? Well, it's the gospel of the flying spaghetti monster. Yeah. If the gospel of the flying spaghetti monster was given to that landlord and it was just like, you know, you're going to be, you know, redeemed by the noodle. Like no one would be like, that's a stupid movie. But if it was the Bible and the same, same structure, they'd be like, well, I like this movie now. I'm going to give this all yeah. my legs and money. Yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and that's the, that's the, um, you know, that's the, uh, the hubris of it, right? Mm. Is a, uh, you know, a person can look at me and regard my religion as just absolutely ridiculous. And how could you possibly believe that stuff? And yet not turn that internal eye upon their own belief system, which is certainly ridiculous in its own way. You know, the outsider test of faith. Right. Uh, we kind of paint that in a, a, you know, a silly fashion. And of course, Christians look at Muslims and say, well, Muhammad flying to heaven on a winged horse. That's that's freaking crazy. Right, 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 right. Without right, looking, right, right, right. without, you know, that self-examination. Mm. It's all the same. Right. There's the idea that framing a movie with you have a problem and your problem really is that you're just not a Christian starts to set up a lot of really bad expectations. Like, yeah, yeah, you're an alcoholic. Yeah, you're rude to people. Yes, you may have killed a couple of kids, but your real problem is, you know, I know what it is. Let me tell you what it is. All right. You're not a Christian. And if you're a Christian, then you solve all that. I feel like uh, what a what a terrible way to to resolve people's problems uh alex unbothered says are you addicted to alcohol just read my book that'll help uh uh <laughs> quoted by the director and i feel like yeah that's a lot of problems Uh-oh. well Uh-oh. jesus of course Drummer. is a pusher right because he changes water into wine so <laughs> <laughs> yeah very true john richards i heard you were you were speaking up sorry 
Yeah, well, you, you Americans may or may not know that Deus Ex Machina is also a title of an album by a Swedish band called Machine Machinai Supremacy. So I recommend that. <laughs> mm, okay, I'll keep that up. Siggy H55 uh, throws in what many Christians seem to forget is that their Jesus was also an alcoholic. Only someone so desperate for the next drink would turn water into wine. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's perfect. And you know, I can do the, I can go, do the ahead, reverse. go for it. Go for I, it. I can do the reverse. I can, <laughs> I can, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wine goes in, water comes out. Yeah. 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 That's the sign of the Antichrist, if anyone, if anyone had it. Yes. Right? But you know, <laughs> we're we're talking about the suspension of disbelief when you watch films, like a lot of people will themselves into doing that. The problem with these faith-based films is that that doesn't happen and that people will watch these a lot of times with the expectation of, well, that could actually happen, right? Or like maybe somewhere that that exact same scenario did happen or an angel did come down because in their worldview, they do believe in angels. They do believe in an interventionist God. And mm. it's such a it's such a dangerous quagmire to open up when you have people who are already gullible in a sense to where they can accept any sort of fiction coming in that mm. kind of like form and you're mm -hmm. playing with that as well ah it's so dangerous man propaganda sucks it really does interest interestingly monotheism really mm. pushed the need for gullibility because up until then you could think i've got this god for drought and i've got this god for a harvest and, right. and this other god for disease but when they're all rolled into one, it really stretches the credibility. Surely, how can one God be for everything? Right. So you really need to be, you use the word gullible, you need to be 100% gullible to yeah. be sucked by that. Well, right. interestingly, um, you know, the Greek pantheon reflected the Republic. And of course, the single God rep represented the, the monarchy. You know, yeah. so like the King David and uh, Moses, and there was always a single leader who represented the power of the creator, uh, in, you know, sort of delivering the message and um, being the mouthpiece for, for that one God. So it was certainly a change towards totalitarianism mm. uh, way back in the day. Right. Mm. But, but what I, do you... I discovered, I discovered recently that the Egyptians... Who I had previously thought had were polytheistic, you know, they had all these um, wow. animal-headed, right. human-bodied gods like Osiris mm. and Anubis and Isis and so on. But I discovered recently they actually went monotheistic too. There was a single, eventually at the end of the um, the era of Egyptian success, they they actually went monotheistic. Did you know mm. that? I did not yeah, know. Raw, yeah, raw. Mm. Really? Okay. Yeah, because well, it used yeah. to be Osiris and Set, like Osiris being the uh, the son of uh, Isis, and uh, Nephthys was, of course, Isis's sister. Mm. Um, it was a big convoluted thing, mm. you know, where mm. the son became the father. Mm. You know, it's actually it, it mirrors the, the Christian version. Actually, mirrors in a much more unsophisticated way the nuanced version of what the Egyptian. Uh, religion was all about the way mm. you describe that makes me feel that a very similar thing happened with like dc universe like batman superman wonder woman and so on like the stories had become since the golden age so convoluted that there had to be a reset event just to yeah. like rebrand everything and they called it the new yeah. 52 where it was just and this is several this is about seven years ago where they're just like all those stories there was an event and all those timelines are done. This is the new singular timeline. We're just yeah, starting out yeah. with yeah. one superhero at a time and we will slowly branch it out. It's a reboot for everyone and get right back into the process too. Yeah. I think monotheism in its own way is the resell for polytheism. Mm -hmm. If you just right, wait right. long enough, they're just like, yeah, yeah. it's just a new brand. We got to get the new guys in here. It's way too complicated. Yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And that, that, of course, that, that reset is exactly what Islam did, isn't it? Because they, they decided that all of the original books of the Quran were wrong, burnt them, and then started again, sort of from memory, wow. to mm -hmm. create the whole thing once more. Yeah, yeah, that's the premise of the Satanic Verses, right? Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. So we see that in the bifurcations of Christianity in a sense of like Mormon Mormonism in my head is sort of like a splintering of the Judaism to have like an American's bent to it. Right. So that you have like these American based prophets and then that in well, that it, it puts in Jesus in the U.S. as a uh, court, right? Right, right, right. And Native it American, Americanizes and, it Americanizes Jesus, right, right, which is more palatable to people who are in America, right? Of course, and of course. and are and also gullible. Yeah. But speaking about that gullibility, it's like, what do you do when you have a movie that you've reduced your suspension of disbelief for that shows you things that you find affirmed based on like what John Richter was saying in the most realistic avenue of media that you can accept or digest and then you walk out of that movie under the impression of like wow they went through all that effort to just purport something that i already believe was true and now here's my figurehead here's my here's my uh catholic or my evangelist uh uh pastor let's say it's a kenneth copeland and what he's doing is he's saying guys my flock listen COVID's coming I want to tell you, you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to pray right now and I'm going to blow COVID away. And this happened back in April, 2020. He's just, yes, he yes, blows he over his entire flock and he blew yeah. away COVID. And all those yeah. people are now convinced. Now I don't have to wash my hands anymore. Now I don't have to wear a face mask. Now I don't have to be six feet away from people because the guy who believes in the guy that I believe in that I just, he had it. They made a whole movie about it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, they wouldn't just do this if it was fake. He blew on me. Now I'm COVID free. I don't need vaccination, right? That's the dangerous thing that we're setting up. We basically said you don't need to think critically. The movie, and and released basically a, a, a like zombies. <laughs> released it is not the people into the world. Yeah, it is. I th I think that's a an excellent parallel. Mm. Um, you know, just really mind zombies. Uh, their brain has been eaten. Uh, and supplanted by a book, um, right, right, and and certainly not just Christianity, but Islam, um, Judaism, uh, mm. you know, pick 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 your favorite, right. Um, but yes, uh, your 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 brain has been replaced, and unfortunately, it affects both you know the layman all the way to the science, the scientists in, in a laboratory. I'm still affected even in my last job. John Richards, you want to add to that? Yeah, well, I was going to come on to that myself because yeah, it. it isn't just it isn't just the depiction of faith and the narratives of um, gods, is it? Mm. People watch movies in which unscientific things happen, and they they've got no way, many of them, of distinguishing the reality right. from what they've just seen. I mean, right. if you were traveling through f space, you mm. wouldn't see the stars go whooshing past you. No. And well, right. you know, and you, you think about the, the first Superman movie where Lois dies and Superman, he gets all angry. And then what he does is he flies out in orbit and yes. turns the earth to go the yes. other way and right. time yes. goes backwards. Yes. And you yes. talk about a ridiculous notion. Right. Yes. And how can you suspend disbelief in the face of that? That is mm. just abject idiocy. So there's also the points where you have Superman even in the latest movies coming out. So like we we look That's at that and we're like, we laugh at it and it's silly. But then we have like the latest Superman movie happen where there's a plane or a rocket ship that's about to fall to Earth. And Superman just holds it with one hand on one part yes. of its frame. And that's enough yes. to support the entire weight of the entire structure, right? Yes. Like there's no way that pinpoint pressure that's supporting the entire <laughs> rocket ship is going to lose its structural integrity. He's just there and he's just yeah, coming yeah. down and he just lets it down on the ground. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, what the hell was yeah. that rocket ship? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and, and what is, what is Superman standing on? Right. Right. How he's, does he, you know what he's standing on? That he's, he's standing on turtles, <laughs> turtles all the way down. Yeah. 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 So but, it worries me, particularly, <clears throat> particularly in the U S because let's face it, the, the U.S. is the most movie-going nation. Sure. Right. Sure. More, more movies are avidly viewed in the U.S. than no, anywhere else. India, India might pull a uh, close Yeah, yeah that's true. That's yeah. true. Bollywood. Bollywood. Yeah. And, and maybe Nigeria, too, with Nollywood. The US. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, the thing is that uh, the, the constant barrage of new movie after new movie since it was invented about 100 years ago mm. has 
it's sort of inveigled its way into the minds of the population to the extent that the difference between the screen and reality has become blurred. Yeah, yeah. especially with effects, right? Right. Mm -hmm. The better compared... the effects, you don't see wires anymore. Oh, you yeah. don't yeah. see the silhouettes mm -hmm. of a person on a green screen anymore. Right. It's, yeah. um, it's very highly technical. Yeah. Right. So the illusion is complete. Yeah. It's compounded with confirmation bias too, right? Because now there's the social aspect that I'm watching this movie with a bunch of other people and they're not screaming out, oh, that's, that didn't happen. That's wrong. They're like, they're, they're enjoying yeah. the movie along with me, but I'm taking it yeah. seriously and I'm not hearing any objections. So I yeah. think we're all on the same page that this actually happened. Right guys, who I'm not talking to, but just in right, my head. Right. And you walk yeah. out and you're like, everyone liked that movie. It must've, that must've been the way how it happened. Cause no one's telling me I'm wrong. Cause I already want to believe that that movie happened. Right. And that's mm -hmm. what people who are desperate to confirm a bias go through. And unfortunately, man, is there a lot of ego to pull that out, you know, that, that methodology out. But a lot of people don't go through the effort. That's why I find that there's a several degrees of harm that come with showing faith in film and not highlighting that it's entertainment. Dred, what do you think? Final words. Well, I was going to point out, because there is a phenomenon, of course, where a group of people seeing a, a thing may not speak up when they see something as clearly uh, incongruous with right. the reality um and that's of course where i become a big pain in the ass to many of my friends um when i do see something or we see something together and, and you know i hear that comment oh man that was really cool or that was a really good movie what a great story and i am not afraid to say are you kidding me did you right. see this did you see that like, uh, you know, like someone falling out of an airplane, Superman coming to catch him and he puts his arms out. Right. Well, you know, gravity, of course, and the speed that that person is going, of course, would, their body would be entirely broken, if not cut in twain. Right. Uh, if he doesn't like come down with some sort of degree of acceleration. Yeah, exactly. Right. You right, know, right, if, right. it would be very, you know, you'd have to follow complex physics in order to get there. Um, but of course, you know. Yeah, and, and, I was... then, and then of course what you hear is, well, you know, it's just a story. It's just entertainment. No, no, no. Right. I totally hear this. When You're I trying see, to like... depict the world here, this is not when the I... way the world works. <laughs> when I see a Batman movie, in fact, the latest one that came out, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's so grounded. It's so gritty. It's so realistic." And there's that scene where, spoiler alert, there's like Batman's doing a wingsuit jump off a building. His wingsuit malfunctions or something. He hits a subway. He gets ricocheted down the street. And because he's wearing his padding, he doesn't break a single bone, doesn't get a single bruise. And he's in the next <laughs> scene an hour later trying to get into a nightclub. And I'm just like, oh, you just broke the movie for me. Because like even Nolan North would show like a bruise or something like that, like on the yeah. body. He's just fine and going around. It's like, mm, I don't well, get it. When you think about uh, football players wearing helmets, the helmets... <laughs> Of course, when you get a, a a big jar, yeah, yes, your your skull is protected, but your brain is just smashed against Correct. the inside of your skull. Correct. Ergo, yeah. concussions and all bad outcomes from that. I just yeah. wanted yeah. to point out here, Loma uh, just made this comment. He says, "I recommend watching Midnight Mass for some interesting religious themes. I find a lot of horror portrays very different views of religion than other genres." nice it's worth midnight you, mass I, I think i'll check it out thank you thank you loma mm -hmm. uh quiet human machine wants to also say hey did that angel hand over a bible was it one of those ones hollowed out that can store a flask of alcohol that's <laughs> that's my last cheeky comment of the day john richards where can we find your stuff we made it to the bottom of the show free thought channel easy as that youtube free thought channel <laughs> got lots of good stuff last night we had a conversation with a Canadian author currently residing in the Philippines. And his, his book is called The World's Biggest Lie. Yeah. Guess what it's about? <laughs> Which lie is that? <laughs> Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at, my friend? Well, I live stream this at 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. And on there, you will find this and Global Atheist News Review, which I do at 11 a.m. And this is these are both on Sundays. 
Um, and if you go on my channel, you'll also find out, you'll find a video of the first Canadian pastafarian wedding, which I performed, which is all completely legal. Yabba dabba do, ramen. Yeah, so come check it out. If you like, please subscribe. I'd love to have it. Guys, you can find my content on my YouTube channel. It's Let's Chat on YouTube. And I'll leave us with, hey, wonderful show. Love having you guys on. And my motto is not about souls. It's about I don't know. And I think I don't know is the best answer to give when you don't know yes. something. Don't let anyone yes. shame you otherwise. Thank yes. you guys so much for joining the show. We'll yeah. to see Cheers, you mate. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.